Okay, so the next mince recipe, we're going to make some meatballs and then we're going to braise it in a tomato based Italian style sauce. So this is going to be traditional Italian meatballs. We can put all sorts of different herbs and spices in these, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that you have your own herbs and spices, your favourites, and I'm just going to show you how we put together um, mince meat beef, uh, meatballs. So we're going to start with half an onion. I'm going to just chop that down a little bit just to help it blend a little bit easier. And I'm going to put that again in our little blender. Any food processor will do. And I'm going to add some garlic. And again, we've got approximately 500 grams of beef mince. So how much garlic is entirely dependent upon yourself, how much you actually like. Um, I'm going to put the equivalent of about a teaspoon in there. Uh, that will give a good flavour without being too, too heavy. Um, we're also going to put in a, a good sprinkle of salt and pepper. Again, we're using the pink, pink rock salt because there's no bleaches. It's a more natural product. And to help us blend that down, we're going to put an egg uh, into that mixture. So we'll crack that egg in, and obviously the liquid of the egg will just help us blend that mixture smooth. We need to go quite fine with this because we're going to mix that in with the meat. So we'll just take that off and you'll see now uh, the onion, the garlic and the egg is a smooth, a smooth mixture. Okay, we're going to add this into the bowl. Basically we just keep pushing the meat into the sauce that we've got there, that mixture, and hopefully it will start to come together. Um, it does help if the meat is cold, it does help if you get a chance, if you can chill chill the onions or if you keep your onions in the, in the salad drawer in the fridge uh, please just bring them out just before use it does uh, help when the ingredients are cold so you'll see now that those ingredients are binding together with the beef mince and this beef mince is quite lean there's uh, no extra fat added okay so you'll see now that mixtures come together and it's what we call loose. It's not, it's not very hard. Uh, and so we're gonna have to be careful when we're um, rolling this into balls. So easy way to roll balls is to use a spoon. And so we have approximately the same size balls and we need to just squeeze them into shape. Um, this can be quite difficult. If it's too soft, then once again refrigerate the mixture and that will help set the protein in the meat. And these are going to sit in, in a poaching stock. The poaching stock will make the sauce. It's going to be made from tomatoes, a little bit more garlic and some rough chopped onion to give us some texture. Um, we can put some oregano, um, garden herbs, and this will be fantastic on uh, spaghetti or tagliatelle as classic Italian meatballs. Again, if you want to top that with some Parmesan cheese, that's your, your choice. So we're just making rough balls. Now the, the, the reason these have got egg in and the, the, the skewers didn't have egg in is because of the cooking process. These are gonna braise in some stock on the top of the cooker. And if we didn't put egg in to bind it together, they would boil, boil apart and you will end up with a bolognese sauce, which is no bad thing, but if you want meatballs, then of course you want meatballs. Okay, so now we're gonna make the sauce uh, to braise the meatballs in. So we always start with any sauce, usually with frying some onions. Um, obviously it's an Italian recipe, so we're gonna use some good quality olive oil. And that just needs to be enough just to cover the bottom of the pan and give us a sizzle when we put in uh, the onions and the garlic. Now, because we're making a sauce, we don't want large pieces of onion. We're gonna start the process with onions into our mixer. And again, we're going to put some garlic. All 
also into our mixer and we're going to chop it up and we would say chunky a little bit chunky not too fine although it's your choice you can always uh, go with finer if you need if you need to if you like that and um, we're just going to give that a quick blend there we go and it doesn't matter if it's got some pieces in it so we're now going to put that into into the pan and we can hear it very faintly sizzling I am going to use some dried oregano, Italian herb. Um, if you've got fresh herbs, as I said before, um, remember fresh herbs, you need twice as much as a dried herb. Dried herb can be quite strong. So just be careful. And at the end, we can adjust seasoning if we need to. So there's not too much left in the bottle here. I'm going to put, use probably about a half a teaspoon. And again, dry herb is quite strong. So we're not going to do anything now until this is cooked. We can put some salt and pepper now. And we need to make sure we cook the onion and the garlic so it's not uh, too, too harsh. We need to soften the flavors, mix them together. The garlic and the onion will both go sweet. Um, and that's a key feature of Italian pasta sauce. So we're just gonna stir that round and we'll see we can See that there's some, still some oil, it's not sticking to the pan. Um, if you don't have a non-stick pan, then obviously be very careful at this stage. Um, and if there is some brown gummy bits stuck on the side of the pan, then you can deglaze it just with a little bit of red wine. That will just take that off the pan before you put your tomatoes uh, into the pan. If you don't like using alcohol, just use the tomatoes and that should release all of that brown residue. So you'll see, it's starting to go a little bit soft. Just a word on uh, things like basil and sage. If you're going to use basil and sage in a, in a pasta sauce, uh, you don't add them at this stage. Uh, again, fresh oregano, you wouldn't add it at this stage, you add it at the end. Because fresh green herb can go soft and soggy and grey looking in your sauce and it won't look nice. Dried herb, because it's already dried, it really doesn't matter because it's there for flavor, not necessarily that bright green uh, herb look that we normally get from putting the pasta and uh, pasta sauce and herb last. So I'm now gonna use passata, best part of a bottle, and one can of chopped tomatoes. Again, these can come cheap if you get them. You can get them flavored with garlic and herb already, they're fine whatever you have in the pantry and we're just going to put that in first and stir it around mix the onions and the garlic in with the tomato and then with the liquid of the passata we're just going to wash the can out so let's not waste anything we just use the more liquid passata just to wash out the can see there's very little left and then the rest of the passata is going to go into that pan. Now we need to simmer this to get all of the tomato -y flavor in with the garlic and the onions. But basically, apart from tasting the seasoning and checking that we're okay for salt and pepper, that now is the sauce that we're going to put our raw meatballs in. And we're going to turn the heat down and bubble away very slowly and cook through the meatballs. It takes maybe about half an hour. Um, depending on the size of the meatballs. So we've, you see we've got a little bit of texture, we've got a few nice pieces of tomato, we've got some little bits of onion, you can see a little bit of the herb and the black pepper, uh, and this is gonna make a fantastic sauce. You see now we've been simmering the sauce for maybe uh, 10 minutes, and all the flavors are together, and we, do, we need to sort of stir it a little bit just to make sure it's all mixed together. So we've got our meatballs that we made earlier, and then I've turned this right down because otherwise it's going to spit uh, tomato all over your kitchen and obviously we don't want that. So with these meatballs, we're just going to drop them into that braising liquor. Now this is going to cook through the meatballs. It's also going to get some flavour from the meatballs into the sauce. And we're just going to spread them out evenly so we sort of know where they are. Three there in the middle. 
And as I said before, because of spitting, we don't want to make the kitchen too dirty, so we're just going to put a lid on the top and leave that on the lowest heat. 25 minutes, then we're going to take the lid off, we'll have a look at it, we'll turn them over, we'll look around, they will be cooked, and then you need to just reduce the sauce until it's the thickness that you require. So you can go really thick sauce, or you can serve it with pasta in, in, a, in a juicy sauce. Okay, so now we've just taken the meatballs and sauce, it's uh, reduced down, I'll just open that up, you can have a have a look at how the sauce is reduced down. Um, this is a, a good pasta sauce, there's still pieces of tomato, which is quite nice. Uh, again, you could have blended that and, and made a smooth sauce if you wanted to. Um, the meatballs have held together, you can see that there, and you'll see a really good quality sauce here. So, um, we're just going to put maybe four or five of these uh, meatballs on top of the spaghetti. And, and then plenty of sauce. Obviously, um, if you want to grate some cheese over the top, uh, but there's, there's an, another easy dish.